you are listening to a podcast from JoetteCalabrese.com, where nationally certified American homeopath, public speaker, and author Joette Calabrese shares her passion for helping families stay healthy through homeopathy and nutrient-dense nutrition. Hello, this is Jendi, and I'm here with Joette from JoetteCalabrese.com. Hello, Joette. How are you? I'm doing well. Nice to see you again, Jendi. It is good to see you. These um, two weeks went a little slower, but <laughs> not too much. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at your website a little bit and seeing how, you know, you really have a passion to help moms and you even go into nutrition and you really seem like an advocate for the families. So how does that connect with homeopathy? Well, you know, it really takes an interest in the subject, and, and the subject is taking care of your family. Uh, I, most moms are very interested in that subject, of course, and just like anything else that's important in life, it takes inspiration, which is what I hope to offer here, too, in addition to homeopathy and perspiration, because there is some work that's involved in learning this, this, kind, this, uh, this lifestyle. Uh, you know, I know what it's like to be at home with kids. And, you know, I was a full-time mom and I homeschooled my children until high school. Uh, but let me share that when you're home with them, it's, uh, of course, it's one of the most important jobs a woman can ever have. It's pure joy, but it's physically demanding. It takes emotional stability and it's nearly full-time consuming, except for one little area. Um, we as humans, we moms... Uh, for those who love to learn, especially when our kids are babies, uh, we need and crave intellectual stimulation. I know that I did. And, um, and, and if you're a lifetime learner, that comes automatically. Now, if you're homeschooling your children, of course, you're getting that. You're learning things that you never caught on to when you were a kid. You learn all kinds of great new things. But if you're not homeschooling your children, it, there is that desire. So ought we take up the study of, say, Renaissance art? You know, or how about um, something like uh, 19th century opera? I mean, I, that's one of my favorite subjects. I would love to take that up uh, more thoroughly. But wait, wait, I've got an idea. Why not learn something <laughs> that not only satisfies the intellectual appetite, but it supports our lifestyle so thoroughly? Why not learn something that will save our family money? And even more importantly, put us in control of our own destinies and our families. That's where homeopathy comes in. It's brilliant. It's a medicine at its best. You learn biology, anatomy, physiology, pathology, botany. It's like going to medical school to, of sorts without all the junk science that, science that attends the profession. Because you're not learning how to subdue symptoms with drugs. You're actually learning how to cure your family. And you get a full understanding of it with all of these other sciences that are um, relevant to it. Now, I don't know if anybody really heard me. You can cure your family, not suppress symptoms, not watch it diminish only to come back later, like pressing down on a water balloon where it bulges out not too long after. You can actually do this with your family. In fact, that's the name of one of my books, Cure Your Family and Self with Homeopathy. So I find this extraordinarily exciting for those who don't have um uh, a, a grand income, I urge them to read my blogs. They're free, for goodness sakes. Download them, print them, learn them, study them, use them. Um, they're very usable, uh, friend, user-friendly, and they're practical. I, I believe in practical homeopathy. For those who want to go the next step, they can get CDs. They can learn that. They can get other homeopaths books and other homeopath CDs. Um, if, if someone wants to go further, they can take courses. I have online courses. Other homeopaths have online courses. And then, of course, the, um, there's tutoring. I do tutoring online. Other homeopaths do this. So I'm not, this is not just about me, but it is about the idea of um, taking up a, um, a hobby of sorts that becomes your lifestyle. It defines who you are because you not only then can treat your family uh, for minor issues and, and sometimes even more confounding issues, but then you become the community healer. I mean, you're in your church, in your community, in your, in, your, in your extended family, in your neighborhood, and people will start flocking to you. It's amazing how this happens. Once they recognize that you have knowledge 
uh, and they have a problem, they're going to ask you. They may not follow exactly as you say until you gain more and more of a reputation, but that reputation is gained by knowing this information. So I, I find it, and I found it. Now, my children are adults now, but I found it very exciting to learn this because um, I was protecting, helping. I was, um, I was a very integral part of the financial aspect of our lives. We didn't, we didn't have health insurance. Um, so th- this, was my, this was my insurance. So, um, at, and even if we'd had health insurance, there were times in our lives when we did, and then there was another time in our life, for the, especially as our children were, were growing, um, that, that I, I don't know that I would have gone to a doctor for certain things. I wanted to be able to do it myself. And I, and I took it only as far as that I was capable of taking it. And it's amazing for me. Maybe I lucked out. I think there's a par- partially luck, but a lot of it has to do with the fact that, um, I took this so seriously so early on um, that my children did never had antibiotics. They didn't have Tylenol. They didn't have those drugs that can cause trouble in the end. So that's how I advocate for families. <laughs> so long answer to a short question. Out of curiosity, do your children still practice homeopathy in their homes now? They do. They do. They still don't have Advil or any of those um, products in their homes and um, in their home, they all live together. As a matter of fact, it's kind of fun that my three sons are together, and um, they they cook from scratch and they make full meals every night and they actually eat together every night. It's really very nice. I'm really happy that it's worked out that way. I, I don't know how long that'll last. You know, they each have to go their own ways eventually, but at least at this point, they're um, um, yeah, they've taken it on. Yes. Well, that's all they knew, so it's probably almost second nature. Right. Well, I just got off the phone with my oldest son and um, he's uh, um, I, he was having lunch and I said, so what do you do at lunch for, you know, at work? Do you do you buy the lunch there? And I was kind of curious as to see if lunch means that he's buying it. Oh, no. He says, um, you know, uh, my brother and I made uh, dinner last night and it's soup and they use bone stock and they and he made some soup and he brought it to work with him that day or t- today. So I was it it warms my heart. <laughs> <laughs> to hear that. <laughs> that is awesome because how many young guys do you know that that will do that? Like I don't I know. Any. I know. Well, I emphasized it. When we were when uh, the boys were being raised, I taught them how to make yogurt, kefir, how to make how to grind the flour, make bread. Um, I taught them the importance of making bone stocks, the importance of using a lot of good animal fats, butter, lard, tallow, et cetera. Um, so it just became a part of who they were. And and because I'm Italian, I love to cook. I love preparing meals. I love eating. I love cooking and everything around food. Uh, so I think they, they took that on as well, which is really very satisfying. And that will help them with their health the rest of their life. Oh, I hope so. I And I believe so. Yes. Yes. So – I didn't know anything about this homeopathic remedies until I talked to you. So replacing the drugs is is new to me, but I can honestly say I've always been leery of them. Even growing up, it was always like a last resort. You know, we did chiropractor if we had headaches, not Tylenol. Great, great. And so now I'm still really leery, but like when they were little and if you call the doctor right away, they say, you know, go get this medicine off the store shelf and use it so any right now I have tweens three about tween age children can homeopathy cover any illness that they get yes yes it can um, it seems counterintuitive to give someone something that not only doesn't cure, and I'm addressing to addressing what you were talking about before, but worse yet is a synthetic commercial product that causes side effects. You know, it's almost as though you're rubbing salt in the wound. When someone is sick, that's when you give them chemicals? I mean, it doesn't even make sense. It flies in the face of, of common sense. So, um, but unfortunately, uh, we have been told repeatedly over the past 80 years um, that this is all there is. And, and, and I'm here to say it's not all there is. In fact, there's a whole world. You know how when the first time you go snorkeling um, or scuba diving, you knew that under that water there was a luscious world of color and depth and, and excitement. But it's not until you put that mask on 
and you go down or you st- lay on the surface and float on the surface and you see it and you experience it yourself firsthand that you realize the depth and breadth of what's under that water on a coral reef, for example. That's what it is to to get involved in homeopathy. You knew that there had to be another way. Intuitively, we all know there's got to be another way. I mean, this stuff, these drugs are are problematic at best. So there had to be another way. Would God make it so difficult for us to be able to take care of our families that we have to use something that has blue dyes and unpronounceable ingredients? No, there is another way. And so that's homeopathy. And that world is, once we put our goggles and mask on, we'll see a whole new world. So, um, you know, it doesn't take long for us to figure out that the drugs are not going to cure and we don't kick someone when they're down. So um, and it also is not uncommon for folks to start questioning, just like you did, that the, you wonder, is the emperor wearing clothing? After a while, you start seeing that he's he's naked. Wait a minute. This has been false all this time. And, and I think I said earlier in other podcasts, it's not as that I believe that um, all of modern medicine is um, uh, unworthy, but I would I would say um, certainly surgery, and I think I've talked about this before, is is um, incredible, and what they've done with surgical procedures is downright remarkable. But when it comes to mothering a child and taking care of ear infections and um, you know uh, otitis media, conjunctivitis, strep throat, um, bee stings, um, injuries that are not very terribly serious. Um, the list goes on and on. Sp- have a- a sickness after having been having eaten the wrong foods or um, an, a post Halloween stomach ache or diarrhea or something. That's something every mother can take care of. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind. Not only do I know this personally and having raised my children this way, but I've been teaching this for 28 years, close to 28 years. And I've taught it in many um, um, arenas in schools and in churches and um, educational institutions and colleges. And um, and people come back and tell me, oh, my gosh, I can't believe what this did for my child's ear infection. That's the end of the ear infections. We used to see them every three months. We don't see them at all anymore. And it was it was repetitive. So, yes, there is. A, this is medicine. This is the medicine we've all been looking for. Um, and it is um, applicable in just about every situation except for strictly surgical needs. And even things that we think aren't really an illness like pimples, some of the cosmetic things homeopathy helps with. Yes, because it's not necessarily illnesses, it's also conditions. Can Think of it that way. Um, uh, skin problems are, uh, is, is often just a condition. We don't call it a disease if someone doesn't have, you know, acne vulgaris or um, rosacea or something extreme like that. Although I just uh, offered a class, I just finished it last night, which will be uh, it's been recorded and we'll have it up and running at some point soon um, on, spe- on that specifically, on how to treat um, acne vulgaris and rosacea and eczema and psoriasis and skin issues. So, um, yeah, it covers everything. I can't think of anything it doesn't cover other than, as I said, a requirement for a surgical procedure. Yeah, and especially if you're a family that's really watching your budget, when you have something like that, you don't necessarily go to a dermatologist for it because it costs extra time, extra money. Oh, how about that time? How about that time? Can you imagine? I mean, I've thought about it, and I've talked to other people who – spend a lot of time in doctor's offices. Usually it's the elderly. And it's very sad to me because it's a lifestyle that that it becomes myopic. All they can think about is the next doctor appointment. And that almost becomes their outing. It's depressing. I've seen it happen too many times. I've seen it in my elderly relatives. Thankfully, my parents are not caught up on that conveyor belt. Um, Partially because my mother was of this ilk as well. My mother was not unlike your mother. We went to chiropractors who I believe in, by the way, I believe very strongly in chiropractic. I think everyone should have a good chiropractor. Um, And my mother made our food from scratch. I mean, not that we didn't have Oreos, potato chips once in a while, but for the most part, everything was made from scratch because she was at home tending her children. And there was a nice dinner every night. And so uh, between that and my mother eschewing the idea of drugs in the first place. You know, my my grandparents were from Sicily. And when they came to this country, and I don't believe that it's all that unusual, but when they came to this country, 
they were suspicious of doctors. They were suspicious that um, when you went to the hospital, you went there to die. And, of course, now it was a different time. It was back in the 1920s, 1930s, etc. But um, they were very suspicious of their nostrums, and they wanted to use their own way. So uh, my mother took that up. Uh, she's now in her late 80s, and, and I was raised that way myself, even though we did succumb to drugs. There's no doubt about it. Uh, because we didn't have these other tools. But you see, homeopathy offers the tool. This gives us what we've been lacking as mothers for all these years, for for these for these last uh, many decades. Because, you know, homeopathy was in every educated home. And I'm, I say educated because those were the women who took it on. Um, Louisa May Alcott wrote about it in Little Women. Um, they, she, they, how they used belladonna for a fever that I think Joe had, or maybe her sister. And so, all families that were educated, the mothers, the women, were educated in learning how to treat their families with homeopathy. It was just a given throughout the United States and, of course, um, Europe and and um, and India, South America, etc. And now, a lot of the moms are busy working out of the house. Um, getting the kids places, and I noticed you have the CD that you wrote on your website, put it in your car and listen to it over and over, and then you can learn, and right. th then you can have the stuff in your cupboard so that you know what to grab and give to your children. Right. It should become second nature after a while, and it will. At first, it seems insurmountable, but it really is not, particularly if you have a family where your children are prone to colds. If, if, if they get colds too frequently or when they get them, they're too extreme or they last too long, the remedy you want to have on hand is Calc Carb 200, Calcaria Carbonicum. Calc Carb is an abbreviation. Calcaria Carbonica 200. And it's when it's used uh, every other day over a period of months, Many and most families find that the colds start diminishing and or they they abort altogether. This is not a remedy that we would use for someone who doesn't get colds frequently. You don't use it and say, oh, well, you know, it's coming up to cold season. I think I'll take this. No, 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 no. This is specifically for someone who has a problem with immunity to colds and flus and infections like that. It's one of my favorite all-time remedies. It can be used in a 200 potency. That's CalCarb 200 every other day. Or if you have a homeopathy kit and you happen to have it in a 30, that's a CalCarb 30, um, then it can be used once daily. And and, and many times uh, families use it every single day for a few months and they watch their children not miss school. They, they don't miss... Um, Piano lessons, they're actually robust and, 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 and back into the game. It's a, a wonderful remedy that is um, um, that every family should own. And sometimes you'll find it in homeopathy kits. Um, you know, a kit is a remedy, ki uh, uh, a little box with 100 remedies in it. In my office sells them. If folks are ever interested, you can get them on these kits online. Um, and so you'll find this remedy readily available. Um, and, it's, and it is one of my favorites. If you do want to just kind of protect against colds, do you have a suggestion for that? Or is it just like vitamin C? No, I would say it's kelp carb to protect against colds. Now, if you're talking about someone who doesn't get colds uh, very frequently and you just want to be a little extra cautious, then um, vitamin C. But I would not take vitamin C. I would eat foods with vitamin C. I don't like vitamins. I'll be honest with you. I, they're, they're usually synthetic. Uh, what you can use is rose hips. Um, I have rose hip plants in my my um, my garden, and I harvest the rose hips. They're little cherry-like sized um, hips that taste quite good. And you can buy them at the health food store and you, they're, they're dehydrated and ground up and then put in little capsules. They're loaded with vitamin C naturally. I like the food with the substance rather than the synthetic version of it because most vitamins are a synthetic version of the real thing. I, I like the genuine. I can't help but, but consider always looking for um, those products, homeopathic um, uh, remedies as well as food substances that, that, that smell real to me, that feel real to me. That's, that's what I'm looking for. I don't want anything tinkered with. If there was only one homeopathic remedy that every family should have and understand how to use, 
what should it be? Yeah, good question. Uh, well, certainly that calcare, calcarea carbonicum, uh, 30 or 200. But um, I'm going to actually step outside of the box and, and offer two. One is Nux Vomica, N-U-X, second word is Vomica, V-O-M-I-C-A, Nux Vomica. It can be um, uh, used in a 30th potency or a 200 potency. And what I love about Nux Vomica is that it's great for overdoing. So too much candy from Halloween, too much food after Thanksgiving, too much alcohol in an adult after New Year's Eve, um, overstressing, uh, becoming overwhelmed by um, city life or fast-paced life. Um, it's, it's excellent for husbands because they have so much responsibility and, and, and they work often work very, very hard um, in an intellectual setting. If it's not an intellectual setting, it might not be quite as useful. It's great for kids when they overstudy, when they're worried too much about exams and they start getting stomach or gastrointestinal issues such as um, constipation or diarrhea or both and alternating between both. So I love Nux Vomica. Um, I t actually tell a story about Nux Vomica because it's great for uh, hangovers. And when my sons were younger, uh, you may already know this story, when my sons were younger, <laughs> they knew homeopathy. I taught it to them as part of their homeschooling curriculum. And Nux Vomica was one of them. And they quickly learned that Nux Vomica is for hangovers. And so when they got to the age where they were interested in drinking alcohol, I hid all the Nux Vomica. <laughs> I said, if you're going to drink, because you know that's against the rules, if you're going to drink alcohol, especially underage, or you're going to overdrink even of age, you're going to suffer. You need to suffer. If you don't suffer, you're not going to learn your lesson. I'm not going to give you a little pill that's going to take away that groggy, painful head, uh, um, uh, <laughs> disoriented stomach. You're going to live with it. Well, I thought that I was successful in this, but then one day I found in my one of my son's cars a bottle of Nux Vomica. He had gone out and bought one. <laughs> but I took it. <laughs> uh, we you know, we mothers have that prerogative. <laughs> so Nux Vomica, Calcarea Carbonicum, and um and there's one more. And this is the one most people learn when they first start learning homeopathy. It's Arnica Montana. A R N I C A. Arnica Montana, like the state of Montana. It's a fabulous remedy for injuries. Um injuries to the head. Uh, I like 200 potency for that. Injuries to soft parts. Um injuries even even at, before surgery, after surgery. Uh, for broken bones, for ecchymosis, which is black and blue, particularly after surgery and any injuries after. It's great for sports injuries. And um, so those are my top three. I've got so many more, of course. I mean, I could go on all day, but um, it is um, – um, we can start with those three. Now, the Nux Vomica, like you said, it's for stress and worry. Like if a family is stressing about moving or finances or something, like how often should you take it? The more extreme the, um, the condition, the more frequently you would take it. So if it's very extreme, someone is vomiting relentlessly, for example, then it would be, say, every hour or two. If it's not so extreme and they're feeling just logy and out, out of sorts, then it might be twice a day. So if there, and anywhere in between is um, would be would be uh, the, a consideration. Yeah, my ten-year-old daughter, like she, when we have something big that's going to happen, she tends to stress the day before, and I recognize that, know that, and just try to calm her down but this is something that would help it's possible that it would i'm not going to say it is not specific for that it's more when they overstudy so they've overworked their brain and now their body is paying for it particularly if it's a gastrointestinal uh, reaction okay. what would be your parting advice for moms and families that we can take to the bank okay well, I believe that knowing how to cure your family is the epitome of womanhood. It's the essence of who we are. It's what we do best. It comes from us deep on a, on a, on a, on a soul level. And, and when you learn how to do this, it's what I would call um, parental exceptionalism. 
This is what takes us to the next level of parenting. This is what puts us in a, in a, in a, uh, excuse me, but in a class on our own. This makes us the kind of parent that gives us a legacy, more than just the love, training them up properly, teaching them what's important in life. But it also teaches them how to then teach their children so that, there's, so that we can break this cycle of drug after drug after drug for even minor or major issues. So that, those are my parting words. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for teaching and for being an example of it. Oh, well, thank you for noticing. (laughs) Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this podcast with Joette Calabrese. If you liked it, please share it with your friends. To learn more and find out if homeopathy is a good fit in your health strategy, visit joettecalabrese.com and schedule a free 15-minute conversation with Joette herself.